the day we're taking a look at these college basketball matches, which are happening on Sunday, December 18, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos. Also, check out our perks and join the High Stakes membership. Joining the High Stakes membership is easy, is cheap, but it will help a lot in the growth process of this channel. Plus if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. One more thing before we start, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions, you will find the link in the description and comment section below. And make sure to watch our videos till the end, so you don't miss any of our picks. Stanford Cardinal vs Texas Longhorns The Stanford Cardinal and the Texas Longhorns will travel to Dallas for a neutral site contest amongst one another on Sunday. It will be a quick turnaround for the Cardinal, who broke their three-game losing streak at home against Green Bay on Friday. Meanwhile, the Longhorns are going through some off-the-court issues with coach Chris Beard's suspension, and almost dropped a home game to Rice earlier this week because of it. However, despite the distractions off the court, the Longhorns figure to be an extremely difficult matchup for Stanford, a team who turns the ball over on 21.2% of possessions. A lot of these turnovers are self-inflicted wounds like passes out of bounds or offensive fouls that will be magnified by Texas's relentless defensive pressure. The Longhorns force turnovers at the 10th highest rate nationally, and they are extremely efficient with their pressure defense that forces everything to the sideline. It will be curious to see if this defensive pressure lapses without Beard on the sidelines, but I do not think it will especially after the scare against Rice. Stanford is average in transition and below average in its half-court offense, as Synergy ranks the Cardinal in the 35th percentile or lower in both sets. I do not trust them to score consistently against the Longhorns, who rank in the 96th percentile or better defending in transition and in the half-court. However, I do trust Texas's offense to be able to get to the rim at will against the Cardinal, so I will take Texas here. Our first pick is Texas win minus 10.5 points. The Stanford Cardinal stepped onto the hardwood against Arizona State and walked away from this one with a loss by a score of 68-64 in their last game. Stanford finished the contest having earned a 35.9% FG percentage, 23 of 64, and knocked down 6 of their 27 three-pointers. From the free throw line, the Cardinal knocked down 12 of 14 shots for a rate of 85.7%. Pertaining to grabbing rebounds, they earned a total of 35, with 12 of them being offensive. They also distributed 16 assists in this matchup, as well as forcing the opposition into 16 turnovers and getting 10 steals. When it comes to defense, Stanford let their opponent shoot 43.9% from the floor on 25 of 57 shooting. Arizona State recorded 15 dimes and had 11 steals in the game. Moreover Arizona State pulled down 33 boards, 6 offensive, 27 defensive, but didn't record a block for the team. Arizona State went 70.0% at the charity strike by making 14 of their 20 shots. They buried 4 of their 23 attempts from 3-point range. When talking about personal fouls, the Cardinal finished with 19, and Arizona State recorded 16 personal fouls. Our second pick is over the total. Auburn Tigers vs USC Trojans. The Auburn Tigers took the court against Georgia State and took a loss by a score of 82-72 in their last game. Auburn walked away from the contest having earned a 51.0% FG percentage, 25 of 49, and buried 3 of their 12 shots from downtown. From the charity stripe, the Tigers buried 19 of 30 tries for a rate of 63.3%. Concerning grabbing boards, they earned 26 with 7 of them being of the offensive sort. They also recorded 12 dimes in this game, in addition to forcing the other team into 19 turnovers and getting 9 steals. 
with respect to defending, Auburn allowed 50.0% from the floor on 30 of 60 shooting. Georgia State dished out 14 assists and had 9 steals in this game. Furthermore Georgia State grabbed 40 boards, 13 offensive, 27 defensive, but couldn't earn a rejection. Georgia State walked away from this one shooting 72.0% at the free throw line by making 18 of 25 attempts. They made 4 out of their 11 attempts from 3-point range. With respect to fouls, the Tigers ended up finishing with 17, while Georgia State recorded 23 fouls. Our first pick is Auburn for the win. The Auburn Tigers will travel to Los Angeles on Sunday to play a non-conference game against the USC Trojans. Auburn is 9-1 on the season with their only loss coming to the Memphis Tigers on the neutral court. They shot just 25% from beyond the arc in that game, which has been a struggle for them all season. The Tigers are ranked number 19 in the AP Top 25 poll, but they have yet to beat a team that ranked in the top 50 of Ken Palm's rankings. This will be Auburn's first true road game of the season, so it should be a challenge for them here. The spread is short at just 1.5, but my best play in this game is the under. Both these teams play at an above-average pace, but I think their defensive ability will make this total go under. Auburn struggled from beyond the arc in their loss to Memphis, and I expect that to happen again here in the Galen Center. According to Ken Palm, Auburn is ranked number 334 in three-point percentage and ranked number 232 in effective field goal percentage. Likewise, USC is ranked number 225 in three-point percentage, while Auburn is ranked number 15 in defensive three-point percentage, which should limit USC's ability to make threes. These numbers make me believe that both teams will struggle offensively, and it will be more of a defensive showdown. USC's defense is ranked number 15 in effective field goal percentage and ranked number 4 in two-point percentage, while Auburn is ranked number 12 and number 23 in those departments. Both Auburn and USC are giving up less than 66 points per game this season, so this game should be played in the 60s. Give me the under here. Our second pick is to take the under 140.5 points. Washington State Cougars vs Baylor Bears the Baylor Bears returned to action after 12 days off, playing the Washington State Cougars on Sunday night. The game is being played in the American Airlines Center in Dallas, home of the Mavericks. Washington State comes into the game in the midst of an up-and-down season, with double-digit losses to Boise Street and Oregon. Their most recent game was a loss at UNLV a week ago, and they don't really have a signature win yet. Baylor took a beating from Marquette in what seems like an outlier game, but bounced back to beat Gonzaga. Washington State does a couple of things well. They shoot the three well, mostly with transfer guards, and they out rebound their opponents with a big front line. They also turn the ball over a lot, though, and they play at one of the slowest paces in the country. Baylor, on the other hand, has one of the best backcourts in the nation. They also out rebound opponents, although they are not nearly as big up front. In this matchup, it seems like Baylor does well at the things Wazoo needs to be successful Baylor tends to defend the three well, and if the Cougars can't to tree bound the Bears, it will be a long night for Washington State. Baylor can score, and if they don't have a lag from the time off, they are likely to put some serious distance between themselves and the Cougars pretty early. Asking anyone to cover 10 points is risky, but it is the right play in this one. Our first pick is Baylor minus 9.5 points. The Washington State Cougars took the court against UNLV and went home with a loss by a final score of 74-70 in their last contest. Washington State walked away from the game with a 54.2% FG percentage, 26 out of 48, and converted 13 of their 23 shots from distance. From the charity stripe, the Cougars made 5 of their 8 attempts for a rate of 62.5%. When discussing hauling in rebounds, they compiled 30 with 6 of them being offensive. They also distributed 16 assists in the game, while forcing 7 turnovers and earning 1 steal. When discussing defending, Washington State let their opponent shoot 50.9% from the field on 28 out of 55 shooting. UNLV distributed 13 assists and had 12 steals in this contest. On top of that, UNLV collected 19 rebounds, 4 offensive, 15 defensive, but wasn't able to put a block in the stat sheet. UNLV ended up going 68.8% when shooting free throws by making 11 of 16 shots. They also converted 7 of their 23 tries from distance. When talking about personal fouls, the Cougars finished with 16, while UNLV recorded 12 personal fouls. 
The last time they took the court, the Baylor Bears walked away with a victory by a final of 80-57 when they faced Tarleton State. The Bears collected 22 defensive rebounds and 14 offensive boards for a total of 36 for the game. They turned it over 18 times while getting 8 steals for the game. Tarleton State committed 26 personal fouls for the matchup, which got the Bears to the free throw line for a total of 29 attempts. They were able to knock down 21 of the free throw attempts for a clip of 72.4%. When talking about 3-point attempts, Baylor made 7 of 20 tries, 35.0%. At the conclusion of this game, the Bears went 26 out of 56 from the floor, which gave them a shooting percentage of 46.4%. The Bears allowed Tarleton State to make 19 out of their 46 attempts from the field, which left them with a rate of 41.3% in this game. They finished 27.3% from three-point range by going 3 of 11 and finished the game at 16 of 29 from the free throw line, 55.2%. With respect to team rebounding, Baylor allowed Tarleton State to collect 20 in all, 6 on the offensive side. Our second pick is under the total.